Welcome to Roboys Research Reviews or the Project Arcute. This is a new initiative of Roboy where we bring you the state of the art research and try to explain it to you in two minutes. But before presenting a very interesting paper in robotics, let me introduce Roboy to you. Roboy is a humanoid robot that we are building to understand how the human body works. What makes Roboy really special and stand out from the other robots worldwide is that he has muscles and tendons instead of electrical engines in the joints. That results in many advantages as it comes to exploring the human-machine interaction. Roboy is built by a team of students and researchers mostly from the Technical University of Munich and it's an open source project. So if you are interested, check out our website roboy.org or the GitHub account github.com slash roboy. I'm sure by now we all have an image of what a robot is and how it looks like. Humanoid robots are the usual ones that come to our minds. And of course, the boring but efficient industrial robots are there too. But today we dig into the field called soft robotics. While we are going to see multiple research papers today, the first one online is an origami inspired fluid driven artificial muscle. In soft robotics, the design, fabrication and implementation of artificial muscles are often limited by their material cost, operating principle, scalability and the single degree of freedom contractile actuation motions. But here they propose an architecture for fluid driven origami inspired artificial muscles. This concept requires only a compressible skeleton, a flexible skin and a fluid medium. The most exciting thing about this paper is that their artificial muscles can be driven by fluids at negative pressures. This feature makes actuation so much safer than most other fluid artificial muscles that operate with positive pressures. And artificial muscles are flexible actuators with capabilities similar to or at times even beyond the natural muscles. This setup consists of three components. A compressible solid skeletal structure a flexible fluid tight skin and a fluid medium. The skeleton can be a spring or an origami like folded structure which is usually 3D printed or at times even folded by the hands. The skin is modeled as a massless, flexible and non-stretchable membrane between two plates forming a cylindrical void. The choice of the fluid depends on the working environment and performance requirements. In their case, it is air which is the most accessible fluid for making a lightweight artificial muscle. And from this video of theirs, you can see 1 kilo of weight can be easily lifted in the air by a cylindrical muscle using water as the internal fluid. They've put a lot of more cool presentations of their work which we urge you to have a look. This technique allows us to quickly program, fabricate and implement actuation systems for very specific working environments at multiple scales such as miniature surgical devices or wearable robotics exoskeletons, transferable architecture as well as deep sea manipulation and large deployable structures for even space exploration. I'm sure you're stoked to see and read more on this but we have more to see so let's move on to the next paper on hand. One of the most exciting soft actuators we could find are called Hazel hydraulically amplified self-healing electrostatic actuators which make use of a mechanism that couples electrostatic and hydraulic forces. These actuators actually achieve a variety of actuation modes which you will see now. The main advantages of Hazel actuators are their robustness, muscle-like performance and their ability to self-heal after a dielectric breakdown. Plus the materials they are built from are widely available. Also, these actuators possess soft grippers which allow handling of delicate objects and they can also be used as artificial muscles to power a robotic arm. So, next we will discuss the physical principles of this. The actuators consist of an elastomeric shell which is partially covered by a pair of opposing electrodes and filled with a liquid dielectric. Applying voltage induces an electric field throughout the liquid and elastomeric dielectric. The result is an electrostatic maximal stress that pressurizes and displaces the liquid dielectric. The ability to grasp an object comes from the increase in electrostatic force which leads to a characteristic feature of a so-called pull-in or snap-through transition. 
For this design, hydraulic pressure causes the soft structure to deform into a nice donut shape. Next, they modified two stacks of donut actuators to operate as a soft gripper, a common application for soft robotics. Actuators within the stacks were constrained on one side to produce a tilting motion. When a voltage was applied to the actuators, the device grasped delicate objects such as a raspberry and even a raw egg. Planar Hazel actuators were also able to self-heal from dielectric breakdown for at least 50 cycles, but although relative to the donut, gas bubbles were more easily trapped between the electrodes. Still, the ability of planar hazel actuators to tolerate high electric fields applied over large areas enabled them to scale up actuation force by combining six planar actuators in parallel to lift a gallon of water. To demonstrate the self-sensing actuation, they powered a robotic arm with two planar actuators combined in parallel and simultaneously measured the capacitance. They did not attempt to control position in this example though. However, the thick elastomer shells used in this work required high voltages to reach electric fields large enough for actuation. This need for high voltage is an existing limitation that may be addressed by using advanced fabrication techniques to produce high resolution dielectric structures. So to summarize, soft robotics is definitely an innovative and rapidly advancing field in robotics. I'm sure we'll come to see many more papers coming up in day-to-day -day applications of soft robotics. And given their usage in miniature surgical devices, disaster relief, their future is definitely interesting. Thanks for watching another episode of Arcubed. See you soon and stay curious.